So we're going to classify quadrilaterals based on their attributes. Quadrilaterals. Um, long word, lots of letters, but what does it mean? It's pretty simple. Quadrilaterals just say four-sided shape. It's a polygon with four sides, okay? Um, we talked about polygons last week. What are some things that can't be polygons? Chase, yes. Any unclosed figure. Unclosed figure, and there was another thing. What was the other thing? It can't have Emma. Curved lines. Curved lines, Curved lines wavy lines, got to throw them out. What about a circle? Is a circle a polygon? No, no. No, you really want to say yes, because you guys had your little preschool puzzles with your circle and square and rectangle and triangle. Circle is its own thing, it's not a polygon, okay? So when I classify a quadrilateral, I'm looking at its attributes. And you're gonna see this word more this year and next year and the year after that. What are attributes? When I say attributes, what do you think I'm talking about? Brett? Life. Properties of it, okay, yeah. Traits. Traits, yeah, okay. So attributes can be carried over to science, right? And in math, when I'm talking about geometry and attributes, it's looking at, um, as Brett said, the line segments. Uh, are lines parallel? Do I have perpendicular angles? How many sides does it have? It's basically all the things that tell me what that shape looks like, okay? Attributes help you identify the shape. Some examples. We're going to look at parallel lines today a lot. Parallel lines, sides, angles, and so on. So when I'm looking at attributes of shapes, it's really important to be able to identify what parallel lines are. What are parallel lines? Everybody hold up your arms and make your arms into parallel lines as best you can. Good, good. They run side by side just like that. So when I say parallel, I'm talking about two line segments that will never, ever, ever cross. They run side by side forever and ever and ever. Um, if you think about railroad tracks, they go on and on and on and they never, ever cross. Got it? So parallel, they run side by side. They're never going to cross. They just are perfectly in line with each other. What does perpendicular mean? Next. It's like a line down and a line across. Uh-huh. Good. And they form a special kind of angle. What kind of angle is it, Colin? A right. A right angle. So perpendicular lines, you're going to see them throw this term out. So I want to make sure you don't confuse it with parallel. Parallel and perpendicular both start with the letter P, but they are not the same. Um, perpendicular lines are lines that cross and form a 90 degree angle. Um, I usually tell kids to think about railroad tracks for parallel and perpendicular. Every time you go up and down the stairs, your stairs all form 90 degree angles and create um, that situation as well. Yes? I, I think I don't know why, like, um, at the start of it, it says pair um, for parallel. Mm-hmm. Like means like a pair of lines. Yeah, I like that. So you think a pair of lines when you and see parallels. Mm-hmm. Like, curve at the start of the 
Perfect. Oh, I love that. I'm going to use that from now on. Thank you. So what he said was when he, he sees perpendicular, the per, he thinks of perfect because it forms a perfect 90 degree right angle. And for parallel, you think of a pair. And a pair of parallel lines or two lines that run. I like that. Thank you. Okay, so we've got a little bit of extra vocab. Everybody good on this? Thumbs up if you're good with this? Good. Okay, now I'm going to teach you how to classify the quadrilaterals. My kids last year that did really, really well on this test drew this picture we're about to draw. They drew it enough times where they memorized it. And at the end of the year when they took their big test, they drew it on paper to help them remember how to classify the quadrilaterals. We can't just call a square a square and be done today. Okay, so at the top of my hierarchy chart, who in here knows what a hierarchy chart is? Nick? It's uh, where squares at the bottom, mm -hmm. then it goes up to a rhombus and a rectangle, and then it goes up to Good. a polygon, and then it goes up to a quad. Yep. And then on the right side, it, it's just a, uh, a trapezoid. Good, good. You've got that sound. You can probably close your eyes and see this in your head. Here's the thing. Some of you guys are not going to have to draw this again because after you draw it a couple of times, you can close your eyes and you know where all the shapes belong. Quadrilaterals at the top of my hierarchy chart. We're not going to go higher than that. Well, I guess we could. What could we put over quad if we wanted to? What do you think? What could we call a quadrilateral and still go one level up? Uh -uh. Starts with a P. Polygon. Polygon. So if I wanted to go one level higher, I mean, a polygon would be one level over quadrilateral. I hadn't thought about that before. Good point. So just like Nick said, we're going to start with quadrilateral up at the top. I'm going to abbreviate it and put it in the box. You may as well. It's a lot of letters to throw in that box. So quadrilateral is just a four-sided shape. The only attribute we know is it's got four sides, okay? That's it. If I have a shape and I can't identify any attributes that classify it as a rectangle or a rhombus or trapezoid, it's just a wonky four-sided shape. All I can call it is a quadrilateral and a polygon. Got it? Over here on the side. So we've got quadrilateral. It's like calling a person a person. That's all I know about it. Now we're going to separate the boys from the girls. Most of the time at lunch, do all the girls sit on one end of the table and the boys at the other? Yes. Yes. You guys know this rule, right? So we're going to put the boys on this side. This is my trapezoid. And usually when I draw this little trapezoid here, I'm going to put Reagan in the trapezoid. Because if anybody's seen my little Reagan, sometimes he just needs to be in a box because he's crazy. But here's Reagan. Yay! And I've trapped him in the trapezoid because I need a break. So a trapezoid is going to have four sides, and it's got one attribute that I'm going to know makes it a trapezoid. What do you think it is? What do you think makes a trapezoid a trapezoid? You three help me a lot. Thank you. Anybody else want to take a guess? Nick? It has um, one pair of parallel lines. Correct. It's got one set of parallel lines. Give me a shake if that's what you were thinking. Good. Is this the only trapezoid we're ever going to see? No. No, there's another kind, too. What's the other thing they throw at you? What do they do to it, Colin? Um, they add, um, one side, they add a right angle. Yeah. Basically, they cut the trapezoid in half, and they only show you one half of the trapezoid. <coughs> And this little box will be here to show you it's a right angle. 
this is a trapezoid and this is a trapezoid and its attribute that is important is it has one pair of parallel lines. If it has one pair of parallel lines, we're going to put it this on this side with the boys. The boys are pretty simple. I've only got one boy. And Reagan's trapped. So we can go on and actually get some stuff done. <laughs> now we're going to get to the girls. The girls are a little bit more complicated. Wouldn't you agree? Most of the time they are. Mm -hmm. So my first girl is pretty easy going. There's one basic attribute I'm looking for, and her name is Parallelogram. What do you think her important attribute is? Eva? Two pairs of parallel lines. And her name is Parallelogram. Okay, so you're looking for two sets of parallel lines and four sides. That's it. She's pretty easy going. This is probably who you want to sit next to at the lunch table. No drama from her. So parallelogram um, also has opposite sides are congruent. Its opposite angles are congruent. But the big thing you have to see is that it has two pairs of parallel lines. Now, when I say hierarchy chart, and I'm asking to tell me all the different names you can classify a parallelogram as, I'm going to start at parallelogram, and I'm going to go higher to the next level if I can. A parallelogram is also a quadrilateral. It's also a polygon. Hierarchy charts, wherever you are, you start at that, that shape or that area, and you go higher to see what else it's classified as. So trapezoid, quadrilateral, polygon. Trapezoid, can I call it parallelogram? Yeah. No, he won't like that at all. That's not nice. Keep the boys on this side and the girls on that side. After parallelogram, I've got these two buddies. They're friends, but they are not the same. I've got rectangle. Mm -hmm. And rhombus. Rectangle and rhombus are friends, but they are not the same. Do not ever call rhombus rectangle and do not ever call rectangle rhombus. Rectangle and rhombus are also classified as what? One step higher, parallelogram and quadrilateral. Can I call rhombus rectangle? Oh. No, she'll scratch her eyes out. Oh. Rhombus has four congruent sides and it looks like this is the shape that looks like I backed my car into a square. It's a little wonky. No perpendicular angles. I'm going to have two obtuse angles and two acute angles. Its opposite angles are congruent. All four sides are congruent. <laughs> Rhombus has that. Rectangle has perpendicular angles, four right angles, opposite sides congruent, two sets of parallel sides. Rhombus also has two pairs of parallel lines, and that's why it's also classified as a parallelogram. Are all parallelograms rhombuses? No. No. Are all rhombuses special types of parallelograms? Yes. yes. So you always start at your shape and then go higher up to the top. So I've got rectangle, I've got rhombus, and my last one is the most complicated one of all. She looks simple, but beware the square. She is a hot mess. She doesn't know what she wants to be because she's going to be everything. Little square has 
congruent sides, perpendicular angles, two sets of parallel sides. She is all this in a bag of tricks. So your square is also classified as rhombus, rectangle, parallelogram, quadrilateral, and polygon. She's kind of having an identity, identity crisis. She's going to be everything. So when you have a square and it asks you to identify the shape based on its attributes, you have to write square, rhombus, rectangle, parallelogram, quadrilateral, polygon. You always start at the bottom and go higher. Rectangle cannot be a rhombus. Rhombus cannot be a rectangle. They're totally different.